because they're saying exactly what we said. You know, we said that the, um, the, the, the computer codes were no good. But they never ask any important question, which is, where's the quality assurance? How could a crummy computer code get into the system back in 2006 and, and never get detected until 2012? Well, I mean, what this is the issue about the simulation? I mean, is that, is that, it was that the simulation. Was the yes. simulation. Yes, the issue of the simulation. When he said that the flow rates were four times higher than the computer predicted, I'm thinking, what's going on with the, with the quality assurance program? This should have had a rigorous quality assurance program back in 06. And it clearly didn't. And the NRC's not going there. You know, they're looking at uh, what happened in 2012. But they're not asking how your quality assurance program broke down. In well, in looking at it, that was the big thing that stood out. Was just yes. The simulation didn't work. Yes. And so even yeah. the NRC, if they were double checking, you know, this is the key. They said an interesting comment in there. They said, they said that the Edison cause analysis was complete. They never said root cause. Edison didn't get to the root cause. The root causes happened in 2006, and it was the choice of Mitsubishi because Mitsubishi had never built this kind of steam generator. That's the root cause. And who built the simulator the simulation that they based all the assumptions that it was going to be okay on? Well, Mitsubishi built the one that failed, but then they brought in three other people. They brought in Westinghouse, Arriva, and Babcock Wilcox Canada. And those are our three competitors. But that and was all after the, the fact. Yes, after the fact. Nobody, <laughs> this, this, this thing worked its way through the entire system um, without getting detected until it fell apart. Now, how can we have a nuclear quality assurance program if you wait till things break until, they, until they're detected? And Westinghouse wasn't involved until after the fact. Well, there's some interesting issues here. Mitsubishi is building Westinghouse's steam generator. So they've, they've qualified their computer codes for a Westinghouse type steam generator. This wasn't a Westinghouse type steam generator. So they had it all qualified for the wrong generator. The other thing is both Southern California and, uh, and the NRC put the wrong slide up there. The picture of the steam generator was not the songs generator. The stay cylinder that they removed wasn't in any of their discussions. So I think they were playing fast and loose with the facts. That the, the, the why would they show us the wrong picture? There was the wrong picture. But why would they do that? I don't know. I well, because I don't think they, they, neither the NRC nor the um, uh, uh, Southern Cal wanted to go to the issue of, oh, by the way, we removed the steam, the, the steam generator's main support member. But it wasn't there in both pictures. And they both just totally uh, ignored the, uh, that they had the wrong slide up there. Okay, so that might be a question worth asking. Because they don't mention anything about the support structure. I know, right, issues. right. None of that came up. No, none, of those, um, none of those issues came up. Yeah. But all in all, it's similar to what you had said. Yes, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, the only thing I learned uh, that's new here was that order of mag that it was off by a factor of four. I knew it was bad. But when I heard it was it, it under predicted four times, God, that's awful. That's you know that's the difference between kindergarten and college. Those kind of differences. I was say from lethal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And that you know, and the other piece that I like them saying is that this was a serious safety issue. And you know, had there been a steam generator, uh, two um, a steam generator pipe break. Um, those tubes would have popped like popcorn, and we would have had an evacuation. So um, they, they caught it, but I don't think we're, we're anywhere near solving the problem. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Hi. Just w just one quick question. Yeah. I just like to know. Um, they say radiation was released, but they don't say in what form it was released. Yeah. The only thing I know that they picked up something called nitrogen 16 okay. in the uh, steam generator. And that has a seven second half-life. Okay. It's, it's very detectable though. So uh, wow. that's that was the, the trigger that caused the shutdown. So that was the it, radionuclide No, that it was released some tritium. So, some oh, okay. radioactive tritium was released. Okay. I'm not exactly sure the quantity, but I had friends that were out on the highway checking and they couldn't find any. So I don't think the release back in January was a big deal. Thank you. Guess what? Hi. Hi, we're with CBS and Kate Cal. Tell us your name. Uh, Arnie Gunderson, that's spelled S E N. Okay. And I'm at Fairwinds, and that has an E in it also. Right. So, what, so far, what do you make of this? What strikes you the most from what they're saying? Well, I think they could have read our reports from a year or a month ago and come up with the same, with the same answer. You know, they're blaming the Mitsubishi computer company. Um, but shame on Edison for hiring Mitsubishi back in 2006. The, um, the computer code uh, should have had some quality assurance with it. And so for that computer code to be so off, 
just tells me of a total breakdown within the Edison organization on quality assurance. And what were you just explaining here with level four? Something that, that they were saying it was four times worse? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 um, the, the, the YouTubes uh, have four going up from below. And Mitsubishi thought the flow rate was one number, and in fact it was four times faster. So that they, they, they were off, instead of going 30 miles an hour, they were going 120 miles an hour. Essentially, four times faster was the speed of the, of the flow in there. And Mitsubishi's computer analysis didn't even pick it up. What do you make of this? That's really amateurish. You know, they, um, uh, and that it got six years down the road um, without ever being detected, nor would it have ever been detected had, had it not broken. He also said something in there about loose parts, and it looks like they were picking up vibrations and ignoring them. Uh, that's one of the issues that they have down the road to, to, to take a look at. That was one of the things they still haven't resolved. But there was an issue of um, Edison had indications of vibration and uh, threw them out as spurious, when in fact they think that was some uh, earlier indications of some severe vibration. For how so, long? Well, it only ran for 10 months so you know, before it broke. So it, it was less than a year, but they were getting indications. They had the warnings, and they ignored the warnings until it two broke. Is there anything that you're hearing tonight that is maddening? Yes. Yeah, what's maddening is they, they said, at the end, the NRC said, Edison has completed its cause evaluation. They didn't say root cause evaluation. Edison hasn't found the root cause. The root cause goes back to 2006 and the decision to build this type generator with this vendor. And my position all along has been you made too many changes to a generator and you chose the wrong guy to build it. And they're not looking at that. They're just looking at the, 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 the mechanical problem that caused the problem, as opposed to the root management issue. And the mechanical problem is simply that the tubes were rubbing too right. close to Right. They're just saying the tubes are banging together. Yeah, but they're not saying what caused one. the tubes banging together. Correct. They're not looking at the decisions Edison made that got them to that point. That's the root cause. The root cause is a management problem, and the NRC is not looking at that. And one of those causes would be that they hired Mitsubishi, and that Mitsubishi had the wrong computer code. Yeah, the the the, the root cause was they made major. They could have copied the generator that they had and been just fine. They decided to make major changes, and then they chose a company that had never built this type of steam generator uh, to do it. And so then the, the daisy chain continues, where they just had. Um, you know, uh, an unqualified vendor building a first-of-a-kind design, and uh, they got what they paid for. They, they say have maintained all along that they did like-for-like -like parts, and that they just upgraded it. Yeah. This was a like-for-like. -like. Uh, they made major changes, and then they chose somebody who's never built this type of steam generator. So that, that combination was the. And so what about the um, the stipulation in the regulations of the uh, NRC that if they did that many changes, they should have asked for a relicensing? They're yeah. not even talking about that. No, we, that's you know, Friends of the Earth's position is that knowing they were making all these changes and knowing they were choosing a vendor who'd never done it, that they should have um, amended the license through a public process. And they didn't do it. And I think this confirms that they were out of control from the time they started. And, and what about the comparison of the two steam generators? Does it, are they setting up a situation where they're going to restart using the one that wasn't so damaged? It looks to me like they're going to throw out Unit 2 and uh, Unit 3 and go with Unit 2. Uh, wouldn't surprise me that they'll salvage Unit 2 and perhaps never start up Unit 3. Uh, that's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me get inside.